50 plus years and uh, I must honestly confess I do not know how to beat diseases. Works because to beat somebody you must see him as distinct from you. That assumes that we as human beings are static targets, disease is attacking us and therefore we have to beat it. Right. Now we learned this lesson from the treatment of cancer. If you have a cancerous tumor, you remove it. And when you remove it, you expect that you have done the job. But as a matter of fact, returning where it is, starts spreading to the lymph nodes and maybe to other parts of the body. So this was a learning message, uh, this was a learning curve for everybody that you can't just do something and expect the disease or whatever to go away. Reality therefore is rather more like this, a closed dance between you in the human body and whatever is affecting you. Let's just take time out here and think about the human body. This is something you all know, you know this from school, but I'm just asking you to think a little and you put all the pieces together and hopefully my message will be clearer to you. The human body is not just a collection of organs tightly packed together, but actually the human body has, has these organs functioning, moving, moving in a particular sequence, secreting, acting, move, um, contracting and this the body, a functioning body. What you basically see is a lot of feedback loops. So if your BP rises, some hormones are triggered, your, something happens to your urine output, your BP falls. Your thyroid function increases, something happens, there is a negative feedback and the secretions stop. All this is done in a beautifully coordinated way with the idea of keeping your body at a particular homeostatic level. Words like milieu interior and all that are used. Basically, it's a kind of a thermostat-like device so that everything is quite cutely maintained in a specific place so that your body is composed, which is composed of cells, function beautifully. Over and above these feedback uh, loops, there is also a certain cyclicity in your body. You wake up, you sleep, one nose is open, that nostril is open, the other nostril is closed, it reverts after about half an hour. So there is a cyclicity in the body in addition to the cycles. All this helps the cell and there are over 37 trillion cells in the body. Various types each cell containing organelles inside it and we will come to that. Most of these cells are red blood cells and every time you prick your finger you can look at your finger and you'll say 5.5 million cells in one cubic centimeter <coughs> and all of us have that. So we are actually kings of our own cellular domain with 37 trillion cells and that's a big number. These cells also have within them and if there are any biochemists out here, you would have heard of the Krebs cycle which maintains ATP or you studied it in school. These cells also have certain cyclical patterns, patterns of division. So now, I don't know whether you are seeing the human body slightly different. It's not just a body, it's packed with organs. The organs have function, the functions have feedback loops, there is cyclicity, it maintains the uh, homeostasis inside it. There are cells within that and the cells themselves have cycles and the cells themselves have a certain cyclicity inbuilt. So what you really have is not just a static target, but you have a kind of a dynamic and we are all dynamic, all of us, all of us human beings, there's no difference between all of us. We are all walking, walking dynamic motions. So I call this a spinning top. But not just a spinning top, these, there are within the spinning tops, multiple spinning tops spinning simultaneously. So even if somebody is sleeping, don't think of somebody as being inert. Everything is happening, functioning within him. Now if you start seeing your body like this, you will come closer to what I'm getting to, that disease is not a target and an arrow hitting it, but you are now a dynamic organism. So let's take one disease. All of us know that microbes cause infection, right? 
do you know that today in your body there are more microbial cells coexisting with you than they are human cells so if i say hi to you say your name is shanta i say hi shanta am i calling out to the 35 million cells in shanta's body or am i calling out to the 39 million bacteria in her body i don't know so you are actually more bacterial cells than human cells and all shapes and sizes and these things are not just sitting there they are not just passengers they affect you almost every aspect as is shown in this slide of your body whether it is your brain whether it is your sugar whether it is obesity all of this is influenced by your microbiome as it is increasingly called so students of microbiology and other science will understand that this is true this is not just a figment of my imagination so you are therefore a dynamic organi uh, organization in your own right you're carrying with you bacteria so now when things go wrong who is the enemy how do you treat something which is so intimately interrelated interrelated with you let me take you to one more aspect of microbes around the 80s came these studies which show that mitochondria which are there in all your cells and you studied this in school mitochondria are actually bacteria which have got into the human cell ages ago and have formed a symbiotic relationship with the cell so you now not only are carrying bacteria on your surface uh, and all your intestines and everywhere else you are carrying them inside every cell i hope you are understanding what i'm trying to say that you are actually so interrelated with the world around you so in truth microbes are more you than you think what about cancer there was a scientist 1902 theodore boveri who injected some extra chromosomes into the cell and suddenly found that extra chromosome leads to something like cancer and how many of you all have heard of henrietta lack now she was a lady shown in that sepia tinted photograph here because her cells are cancerous cells which keep on growing and they are ideal for research purposes they are called hela cells so what is cancer cancer is cells of you and i which is seeking immortality it doesn't stop growing so is it something from outside no it is very much within you it is just the cell keeps on growing and that is what i've tried to show you in that diagram now i could go on but broadly remember that the common diseases which affect people are classified just to simplify so when i see a patient i don't have to get all confused we classify all kinds of diseases or pathologies like this so the first two traumatic and environmental well they are traumatic and environmental you can't do anything about them but all the others infective neoplastic neurological and genetic are also closely linked to you that you can't beat them you got to figure out how to tackle them so i hope in the next 5 or 10 minutes to explain how modern science hopes to tackle them because this is of relevance to you now these are standard methods nothing great nothing cutting edge just standard common sense but in each passing year we are finding better and better ways of doing it okay so let us just take them run you through so this is how you will approach generically any disease so you will try to prevent whether you use technology whether you use knowledge of the disease whether you use simple thing like a mosquito net these are all prevention strategies so somebody wants to invent some fancy technology a buzzing device which pushes away a mosquito good for you what you're doing is preventing you can do screening uh well when you have a child you land up taking a small blood test and the blood test will tell you screen for a lot of uh, test you can do genetic test you can do screening for mammary gland uh, problems you can vaccinate because this is preventing the child from getting problems you can remember that if a person comes his relatives are more likely to have the disease that's another thing which people should you should be aware of you have now tools which enable you to identify things very early you also have certain strategies that if somebody comes to me i don't try to pretend to be superman and treat him or her we form teams 
people with different expertise like this one size fits all does not apply in medicine anymore you have to look at various people various expertises pull it together this is called multidisciplinary strategies now is it high tech no it's common sense but applied correctly it is life saving there's a lot of technology there's lasers there's robots etc but as they say the nut behind the wheel is the most critical thing so you have to be smart to use technology you have many treatments which were not there before you also have now an increasing realization that simply giving you a tablet is not enough you have to touch you have to feel you have to you, you have to have a nurse who comes and talks if any of you all have elderly at home try leaving a tablet on their table and walking off they will never take it you have this thing called evidence based have you heard of evidence based evidence based pyramids <coughs> that is it's not enough to say i treated a patient and he got cured you got to prove it statistically and there is a pyramid of evidences and only then can it be accepted and once it is accepted it has to be adhered to so it is now become more than just one patient coming to one doctor and taking a treatment it's getting far more complicated you in this you have this concept of personalized medicine where you try to find out the genes of the problem the genes of the person and see what medicine suits you have very exciting treatments like car t and all that where you are actually stimulating or converting or changing the cells immune cells to attack specifically tumor cells within the body you also now appreciate that it's not enough to treat you have to monitor you have to make sure everything goes all right you also know now the importance of following up because within 5 years the thing may come back so what i'm trying to say is when it comes to diseases these are all standard technologies which we knew which with better and better equipment we are applying much much better you also now have this <coughs> big thing called ai and everybody keeps scaring you saying docs not going to be needed you're going to have an ai machine taking you over we're laughing every time we see the traffic we know what's going on but anyway we have ai which is definitely going to be there in the future and i hope all of you all are aware of this because that's going to provide you employment in the future you also realize now that caregivers are humans humans suffer fatigue there is an emotional fatigue there is the torture of complications occurring which is felt more by the caregiver than i mean if you are trying to carry a child and the child falls it's one thing to say that the child is the victim but you are also traumatized by it so that makes you the second victim so this is an awareness which is coming very very gradually but high time you also now have this you know the old days he's a doctor what does a doctor mean he's done his mbbs that's for five years of studies does that make you a doctor no it now is now gradually dawning on doctors and on other people that if you are caring for a sick person consider yourself a doctor whether it is legally thing is another issue but you must treat yourself as a doctor and i've shown you some slides here that right from the manager to the chairman to the cleaner to the nurse everybody bears the same responsibility for the patient as a doctor it is not that only the doctor carries the burden on his shoulder and everybody else is say 5 o'clock my job is over i am going no you can't have that so to everybody who says i should have been a doctor i tell him if you're caring for a sick person you are a doctor behave like one use the same ethical standards you expect from a doctor when you treat people So if you make drugs if you make fake drugs there are so many people i know some people who are kings of the fake industry of drugs i've been introduced somebody said you know after he passed away he said he is the king of the fake industry of drugs and i'm scandalized because he is a doctor now if i was to go on bragging that i'm a fake i want it all to sink into you if you're dealing with healthcare or sick people pretend for yourself and be, become somebody like a doctor also now there is a realization that the patient is not somebody who comes gets treated and walks away the patient also has responsibilities he has rights but he has responsibilities there is also what i call the role of common sense all this which i'm showing today policy environment population politics is actually common sense now 
it's not advanced science it's just common sense i mean if you have a huge population demographic you can't solve problems as easily as if if you have less and so all of us should be aware that whatever we are doing is not only high tech and science but also increasing application of common sense money matters and to those of you all who are managers you should realize that traditionally med medicine has been done on debt financing traditionally medicine works on debt financing you take a loan and you charge patients make money until you pay off your loan but what is needed increasingly based financing wherein you you have a good idea and you get other people to invest in it so you can scale up fast your mba so you'll understand what i'm talking in india today there is a role of this make in india because you have the seed which is brilliant people like you and you have incubators which help you actualize your ideas the flaw in india today is a cross specialization dialogue is not mature see as an mba person you may know the difference between debt and equity financing the tech technical person may not know the doctor will not know so what you have to do is form teams if you don't form teams i will give it to you in writing everything will fail because no doctor understands the engineering perfectly for that matter no engineering un engineer understands all engineering perfectly he can un understand only his field so unless you team up you get nowhere the manager who thinks that he can control is silly because today's world you can't control you can just barely understand you can facilitate and therefore you must form teams and when you form teams then all this is a reality then the government plowing money into seeds and soil is actually worth it so y'all are the seeds you cannot just go in as one and hope to become a big tree anymore those days are over so let me just give you a quick recap it started with can you beat a disease and i said no diseases affect the human body the human body is a dynamic organ the techniques of addressing the uh, the disease are many these are standard knowledge is increasing in this field and i leave you with a few pointers as to how we go in the future this is ancient wisdom now the ancient wisdom says that the human body is actually the body the mind and as you go inwards it reaches up to the spirit now i'm not going i'm not a spiritual person i'm not talking about spirit but i'm just asking you to note this again that those are all very interestingly like a fort now the fort is organized in such a way that if somebody breaches the first level everybody goes to the second level and from the second level you launch your attack and therefore if you believe in these concepts and i do very strongly if your mind is strong your mind can support the weaker body if your spiritual strength is good it can support the mind it can stabilize the mind it can so treat this as something which is a very functioning paradigm very functional paradigm it allows you to starve off disease beautifully so you have the kosa concept which is your heritage which you have handed kabir das said that we are the play of five five elements and we are enjoying we are having joy and sorrow but he sensed the same thing which we which i'm telling you here modern wisdom see you see yourself as a spinning top with multiple spins in it inside it realize that what happens when disease touches you is it touches you it prehesses you you shift to one side and you have to get back your balance so if you can learn to do that then as far as i'm concerned you are ready to fight disease beat disease i'm not sure but fight and prevent its ill effects definitely so can we beat diseases no we can't but we can definitely make it difficult for diseases to beat us and the last line let's assume you can't accept it with grace and die with dignity is the best blessing i can give to anybody thank you